Good morning. It's finally cooler here. Um, okay. Whoever watches this, help me figure this out because I'm aware of uh, some dynamics in the cult that I'm thinking about and I'm trying to unwind them. And um, this is going to take me a long time to unwind. But a woman who's... Uh, let me just say a woman who um, who was Sufi adjacent for a year or so, a while ago, um, talked about being body shamed. And what that means is just that, uh, let's just say the size and shape of her body was brought up as something to attend to in a way that was boundary crossing and the reason it struck me as first of all she was not around very long it's not like but even so uh i've heard a, a, stories from a lot of women that the wives of dean diami mostly elaine would bring up women's weight all the time and would uh um you know suggest that you should work out and that, that there was this feeling in the air And it's thick, so like, how do you unpack this? And what, how do you unpack it? Like, what was going on? Um, and I think there's a real, there's a tie-in here between like your physical expression and, you know, the way you had to dissociate from your feelings and your thoughts and, you know, you couldn't really be in your body. And um, the only way to take feedback like that is to swallow it, digest it, and blame yourself and somehow make yourself responsible for the shape of your body and, and, and you know, it becomes value-laden. Um, and there's something here about that's connected to the fact that I had to not be my sexual self and um, and also the way that Dean's wives model how to be intimate with the guru and um, you know when you're in that environment you want to be close to the guru and uh, for men it's different than for women women that would have some kind of sexual physical component it just would you know, if you were older or big, you just didn't have the same access to him. If you would be young and slim and somehow your body type fit, you could have access to him. And that, of course, had spiritual parameters and definitions. However, it was underhandedly sexualized. And if you caught wind of that or felt that somehow you had to dissociate from the experience of it. In other words, you can't trust yourself, you can't believe yourself. And there's many stories of him being weirdly, oddly uh, sexual and attentive to younger women, thin women, and um, the ways in which his wives are express their womanness and the uh, apex of being close to the guru is to be completely and utterly submitted. And that is, um, you're always wrong, and uh, um, and that was valued. So uh, it's not empowered. It's empowered in a very thin way, and um, the all three of the women who are his wives have major health problems and have over the years, um, and they've suffered. And um, and of course, that's explicitly valued. Like, well, you know, they're enduring it, and this they have the capacity and. It's, um, and then, uh, so anyway, can you help me unwind all this? Like what's really going on here? I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a narcissistic abuse, which is interested in a certain expression of femininity of womanhood and it spiritualizes it and, um, shames. And then at the same time, it denies that it's doing that. So no, you can't, if you are a larger woman, you cannot come into that environment and be your, you know, big, beautiful self. You'll be, I don't know, um, jesterized. <laughs> Why just make that up? Um, it's thick and really traumatic and really aggressive and really underhanded. What is going on here? Traumatic narcissistic abuse. That's what it is. 
Uh, if you have any insights into this, you know, write me, uh, write down your thoughts about it, the way that your body was, uh, pardon me, and your physical expression was uh, marginalized, demonized, vilified. What's the word for being othered? You know, that's kind of the best word.